so this is my template that uh, when I open Ableton, this will be here. So I've got one MIDI track, one audio track, another audio track, and then my vocal setup. So my vocal setup already has like a really basic chain on it. And then my returns, which is quite important, is I've got Valhalla Vintage Verb on one return, and I've got an H delay on another return. And uh, I find returns really useful uh, when I'm making these sort of like soul replays or anything really in general. That's I like. I'll use these quite a lot. I want the beat to be at like 83 BPM. That's kind of where I sort of sit comfortably. Between 79 and, and 83 is like a really comfortable uh, space for me to make beats at. But I know that like most things I sample aren't at 83 BPM. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to drag my tempo down to like 63 maybe, where like you sort of get that feeling already of an old sort of like soul where it's slow enough to have some a lot of movement in and a lot of swing in because although most of the most beautiful soul records are in 6-8 you can't sample them into 4-4 so we want to get to a tempo where we have a lot of swing and 63 for me just has that swing in it. What do soul records have in them? Usually they have like some sort of electric piano, like a Rhodes or a Whirly. Uh, they'll probably have an organ. Um, they'll probably have some piano and maybe some electric guitar. They'll definitely have like a kind of dusty drums going on, which I used to avoid when remaking samples, but now I put the dusty drums in. I'll make them myself just to give everything that kind of authentic feel and usually a xylophone uh, all good the best soul records ever have xylophones in them so what i'll usually do is i'll go to my to my midi track and i'll pull in something like addictive keys and i really like the mark one uh piano on it so if we find that uh mark one piano here and then i turn the tremolo all the way up so we get that nice like kind of woo, 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 woo on it. And it's a kind of, it's just a beautiful sounding Rhodes. Um, and then what I do, I always start with chords. So what you gotta do is find like a nice chord sequence. And if you're not that good at chords or you think you're not that good at chords, then I recommend learning about sevenths. It's like sevenths and ninths. And um, it's really not that scary. All it is, is just, moving a few notes from the the basic chord. So if you hit a C, which is arguably the most basic chord, but if you move your thumb to here, or you play them at the same time, then you see it's, it changes the chord, but it's still a C, but it's a C7. So that's what we're gonna do. And if you're struggling to find out like what chords go together or what are nice chords, Always just Google your favorite records and find out what the chords are. Learn to play them, play along with songs. Then you can like, those chords are lovely. Let's just change the middle one with the end one, swap it around. Does that work? And if it does, then you're fine. They're great. You know, there's no, there's no copyright on chords. There's no copyright on chord progression. You can find a nice, like an old Al Green record or an old Marvin Gaye record or anything, old Beatles records, old Rolling Stones record, and find out what the chords are, learn them, rearrange them, and you'll have this, a similar feel, but um, it won't be the exact same as the, as the song. So you won't feel like you're completely ripping off the song. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with D major. And then we're gonna to go to B major seven. So without the seven, it sounds like this. D major to B just sounds pretty standard. But if we go D major to B seven, it has that extra little source in it that for me just hits me in my chest. Then we go to E seven instead of E. That's quite straight. E7, and if you look, I'm only moving my thumb one. So if you can play an E, you can you can play an E7. 
And then same with an A7. That's it, look, my thumb's only moving one space. That's straight, that's soulful. It's like, it makes such a difference and it's only, you're only moving your finger one space. I think that sounds like a really nice chord progression. I set my tempo at 63 and see if the, the, the chords work in it. And then with that tremolo on the, on the Mark one, like for me, that feels good. So as long as I've found my chords I like and I've set the tempo that I like, then in my eyes, I, you know, we're good to go. So we just record it in. So that's D. P7. E7. To the A7. All right. This is where I start. I'll start using my sends. So my sends up here, obviously that one is my reverb. That one is my delay. So put some reverb on it. And then I'm gonna start the process of uh, samplifying it already. So what I quite like to use is a Waves plugin called Kramer tape delay so you slap it on and then this will this here record level will crunch it up a bit so let's let's like whack it up and see where it sounds so you can already hear that it's distorting it a little bit and any kind of like distortion or like low pass you can put on uh, your instruments is all is, is going to really help you get that good feeling the other trick I like to do is Turn this uh, to S, which is like a slap, um, slap delay, and I'll put it. I'll put the uh, this button up a lot. So, like you'll hear a little bang. It's like a tiny little like one, instead of like bang, 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 the slap delay will just be like bam, bam. It's really good to put on vocals, the slap delay, because it gives it that kind of like 50s sort of like Elvis delay. Mm -hmm. 